G'day and welcome to part six of our eight mil restorations. Um, I've changed my mind with the blue one. I looked at it and I looked at it every day and I kind of liked it less every day. So I've decided to go and get it stripped. Cost another 35 bucks to get it all stripped down again. And I'll repaint it and I've got some nice GM lime green, LJ Tomato color. I'm gonna do it in that, I think it'll look better. Um, so I've got, so that's going on. Couple of them, uh, because I've got to change the tops because they have different engines in them now to what they did. Uh, me sort of reworking and fiddling around. But there's basically three, three of them finished. In the next video, we'll get them all finished because all the parts are still arriving. So there's pistons and rings and stuff like that. More, more of them. Each mower is basically new bearings, new seals, new rings. Some have new pistons. Um, and one's got a new old stock barrel and piston going on it too. So I guess there was only supposed to be four videos all told in this series. Um, here we are at number six. So it's likely to be seven or even eight by the time I've finished. And then we'll move on to our humble falcon. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy. First thing we have to do is rivet on this little ratchet for the height adjuster. Um, this one is being sort of going around looking for the best bits where the other I was kind of looking for the worst. They do go. So we can put this in. And we'll click him around, we've got that in beautifully. This one is just some sort of deflector. Kind of goes in that position there. Um another few rivets. These are eleven dollars a box, these rivets. Whoops, that old one's still, some of those old ones are still there. Where does this one go? That's right. So I'm just going to pop those out because the casings for the old one are still there. I didn't notice when I pulled it apart. Yeah, I should have noticed then. I didn't. Oh well, that makes me stupid. And we put the deflector in. So again, I'm just, I might just half tighten one and reposition the other bit. It's both my little rivet thing. I'm just going to half squeeze this. And the only holes left then will be for the axles. I just want it located so I'm not going to struggle with it. There we go. That'll do. So we've got some of the fittings in, um, time to stick some axles in, I'm just going to turn him around and we'll start fiddling around with that. This is the best of the rear axles that I have. Um, the bushes that came out of these weren't too bad, but I ended up getting new ones which I've cut down. These are repo and aftermarket, whatever you want to call them. Good. I've now got grease. Okay. So. I'm just going to apply a little bit of grease to the axle and wipe it off. And stick these in. I've sort of measured them and cut them to size. Perhaps not the right thing to do, but mm, it's all good. Okie dokie. And of course, we'll put some new clips on. I'm not in a good position here. Man, we've had some success, of course they're going to drop in there, and I'm just going to establish the gap toward the bottom, like that. Okay. Whoops. That did not sound awfully healthy. Right, and we just used some of these clips, where are they? And that will establish the or keep it all in the right place. Because we've got one that goes down there and then this side of it goes down in here. So I'm just going to tool around with this for a minute and see if I can get it in. I found it easy to get that side in first. There we go. Lovely. It's doing what it's meant to do. Now this guy, these are quite tricky. Particularly when it comes time to put the spring on, this is the best one of these I've got. It's 
going to go behind there and lie down like that. Um, so I think we'll just pop a bit of grease on here, on these little pins. Um, this is the best one I've got, of course, going on the best mower I've got. None of my mowers are particularly collectible, but I do have the my sort of preferred thing. The, I've never been a fan of the high deck ones, if you like. Um, I've always kind of like these. I've scratched that paint, but that doesn't matter at all. And I can lie down there, and there's this spring, and this spring is a mother to stick on. That will go in there. And what the spring does, I don't know if you can see where you are, the spring actually holds it back on this angle a little bit to stop that pin falling out. Um, some of the springs were missing, but I don't, I'll wait till tomorrow. It's night now. It's like, what time is it? Half past 11 at night. Try now. They're just, I've just adjusted it. <laughs> um, I've got this clip here, which, oh gosh, what have I done with it? Here it is, here. And we could just use a socket over that. I'll just get that and tap. And that won't come off. The one that originally came from this, I didn't take off. It's got a split in it. But I'm missing a couple of those anyway, a couple of the springs. But that now will stay put. So we'll stick the front axle in. We've got a couple of these keepers somewhere, these guys. And we've also got to put that clip at the front there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yes, you can. Good. Um, I'm replacing those bolts with um, quarter inch fine. I want new fasteners there because the others were just so corroded. Um, so I'll grab a couple of quarter fines. And they're about the right length. We'll get the nuts. There. A couple of lock washers. And we'll also throw in, for good measure, some new nuts. These are all things I bought years ago when I had a couple of British cars, because they're just made up of this stuff, you know. All right. I'm not sure I'm absolutely correct with this, but we're going with it anyway. Hang on a minute. Let me turn those around. I think these are wrong, to be honest. I'm not sure at all. That's going to sit down there. Right. I've probably got that adjusted too far. No, that seems actually quite alright. Okay. So these clips kind of go over there like that. Where's the screw stick? Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. But that's the most important thing because otherwise you can't see it. Mm -hmm. There's my soft hammer. Cool. Nothing sprang out and went twang, so that's always a good thing. I might need to move that adjuster back a bit just to give it a bit more leeway. And then we'll stick these guys on. And I've got to, these are another thing, I've got to buy a couple of these. Because um, some of them are rusted to the point where they're razor sharp on that edge. You can't bend them easily, they're hardened steel. Down like that. Where's the other? And then we're pretty much finished underneath here, except for bolting the engine up. So we'll have a bit of a sticky in a moment. And then you can write in the comments if you think I'm a doofus and I've done it wrong. Because that's more than likely the case. Um, I'm just going to wipe this grease. I hope you some grease. It pisses me off because then my hands are all slippery and I've got to wash them. Alright. Now these fit. They're a 716 head. These are quarter 28, so they're a fine thread. Some of them are 24s. I think the ones that came out are quarter 20s. I'm just going to pop these bolts through here into the rebate in the base, which I've got there. And we'll stick a lock washer. They originally had nylocks. These are no service mowers, so they're just going to sit around and look pretty, which sort of defeats the purpose of having a mower. But I don't know, I kind of dig them. I like the alloy base ones. I really like them. That can go down there. And that should, the, the test for this is to make sure they don't rattle around at all. You don't want that because that's what causes the housings to flog out and go all semi-elliptical. Let's go and get something and tighten those up and we should be good. They should be nice and tight. 
So the, the test is that. So when these flog out, they tend to move up and down and around. Um, you notice that most when you lift the mower up on, by the handlebars and the, it's supported just on the front wheels, and of course they lock up because they move back and the wheel hits the housing. But that should work, which it appears to work really well. So I'm going to flick him around and we'll stick some wheels on. I think the bushes are wrong, but I don't think that matters terribly much. And I've got all those fittings in there. And all these ones. So let's turn it around and have a bit of a look. Alright, more grease. I'm just going to put a little bit there and get this little dust cap on. Oh, these are quite stiff. Um, where's a rag and a wheel? The wheels don't look that great, but um, they're original. Let me just bring you over to the edge a bit. Let's tuck the front one on. And just push that down with the wheel. Kind of like that. And then we'll lube this up. Um, with more grease. And then, I didn't even, I'll tell you what I didn't do, I didn't even replate the, um, the wheel, the eclipse for the wheels on this thing. I didn't see the point. Because they were all just in mint condition, they're still gold. So I just thought, oh, well, heck with it. Hubcaps need, the hubcaps are yellow on this thing. I'll give them a clean before I stick them on. I'm going to rotate this guy around. Hopefully they don't drop it, which is sort of good. Actually, while I'm at it, where's this thing? Look at this. That's in great condition. And that just goes over. I'll just give it a wipe. A little hive dust handle. Some of them have just munted. This is a really good one. This mower still has its home pattern and everything. And I'll tell you what, I'm kind of tempted to give it back to the guy next door because it was his father's. And he's, this guy is 80 odd years old. Um, He's 82, is he? Oh, I've got too much on. I'm talking. That's the problem when you talk. You do it all wrong. Mm. Right. I'd love to give it back to him, but he doesn't seem to be awfully sentimental. I'm ridiculous with my... Well, I lost my dad when I was, I think, 19, 18. And um, I've still got his car and some of his... I was petrified of forgetting him. And so, of course, I never did. But at the time I was a kid, and so I kept all his stuff, and as it turns out, I've stored his car and a lot of his personal papers and stuff like that. Right, I might just give that a knock to knock that thing in a bit more. And I'll just put a clip in, and I've got to get those hubcaps cleaned. What about the rest of the clips? Caps the originals. I've got some which look a bit better. I don't know where I put them oh, over here. Or even, well, that's arguable. <laughs> but the main thing is that it's all, um, hang on, it's all working well. So the tyres are worn, but they're the original ones, you know. That's really hungered low, isn't it? I'll put it up a bit. There we go. That looks lovely. So we can put the, I, I suppose the next thing, we'll put the short bars on on the back and then we can sort of lean it back put the engine on we'll knock in the pin for the um the catcher i've got this had a different type of catcher spring it had a sort of a, a plastic block i've got to wash that up a bit and that sort of sat there was a square head bolt that sat like that with a sort of spring that ran over the top it didn't have the conventional type of spring there so just a few things to clean up, and but it's going to come up beautifully. I'm very pleased with it. I've pop riveted this spring. It didn't come out as well as I would have liked because it obviously had some corrosion and whatnot on it. Same with the back, but you can't do anything about it. That's the thing's history. Um, again, we're using the best of the stuff I've got. I don't like these particularly. I'm making some more of those out of Doran. Um, that this one's a bit mangy. What if I stick it in? I'll have to stick it in that way. Oh, 
much. That doesn't look particularly good. I might, I might make a bunch of new ones. Um, but all I, I really need to do is, I need to wash that. I'm going to do it now because it's about half past 12 at night. Uh, this is pretty grotty and it's just got a series of steps on it. So we'll clean all those up. I might even have to wet sand it to get it to look clean. So this looks quite nice. Got a bit ahead of myself because that um, spring ramp, for want of a better term, actually has to have the rod going through it. So I've just sort of pulled that back. And there's also a square bolt that goes through there and tightens up underneath. Maybe it goes through it. Does it go through it? No, it goes through the bottom. Oh, God. Oh, it goes like that. What a horrible bit of kit that is. All right. That doesn't matter. We've two lots of rather splendid powder coating. Um, let's have a look. I haven't unwrapped these yet. I don't know what they're like. But knowing Sam, they'll be perfect. I get these almost powder coatings that, that's blunt, um, from Sam. Damn it. It's pretty sad when the side cutters are sharper. All my powder coatings done through Sam at Tech Coat. I trust him completely with all my work. He is a consummate professional. And it's surprising that these side cutters are so sharp. They're very old. These are Nipex. They're German. They're around, I think I paid $70 for those about 10 or 15 years ago. They're very dear, but they are hands down the best on the market. So what we're looking for with this one, this has... Is that those ones? No, I don't think it does. I think that's these ones. I think they're the ones for it. Um, with the thumb wheel things. So, we'll take a pair of those out. I just want to see what I've got. Because there are loads of different bars on these things. And I just want to know exactly what I have. There's another one. I just want to make sure they're identical. Which I'm tipping they will be. One of them has a sort of a pull-up bar that locks everything down. Actually, that might be in here. I decided it was all rusty. It was originally chrome. Um, and I'm not sure which mirror it came from. I've sort of lost track of Because I'm doing eight of them. The videos say, it said, yeah, that's that bar there. And I've got the little locking plate. Gee, that came up well. Doesn't it do beautiful work? And that's another pair of those ones. Good. Right, now I know where I'm at. How many of those have I got? And are they all the same? So now we've got... Let's move that. They should all be... You can see where they hung them up. They should all be identical. And I've had them all done antique white. The white birch. Which is basically antique white. And there's another three. So our Mayfair and so forth... These are all identical, we're just going to use two of those. I'll put the others away for now. That's a standalone piece for the other one. Right, except those two, they're different. That had a bar going between them, a little rod. Um, so I'll leave those out as well. I have got my lumps there, I don't know what those are. They must have been in the casting, because I thought I must have done them. Uh, here we go. I'll take a bolt through. These are square headed bolts. The flat faces the outside. I think that goes like that. Turn it four. Then that. Then a flat washer. Then a nylock. And we just tighten him up. And that will look rather nice. The nylocks are a bit chalky. Um, I shouldn't have hydroblasted them. What do you call them? No, I shouldn't have plated them. I've done that before and they've been alright, but the plastics they use on these isn't particularly good with that sort of thing. Seems some fare better than others. Alright, I've got that on. That all looks pretty alright in there. 
Perfect. Excellent. That should index like that. And we just pop it out on. I'm have to zap that up with the gun after. God, it's got some compression, this thing. It's good. Perfect. Right, so I'm just putting these spaces in. Um, this is not the engine that was in the utility. Oh, stick there. Um, but it's the one going in. So it's got new bearings, new seals, new piston rings. Um, it's the worst of the 160s I've got, but now it's good. It's all sort of reconditioned. So it started off, if you like, as the worst of the 160s. It came out of the Commodore from Peter Taylor. And um, so I'm just sort of fitting it out. You can see it looks lovely. And the cylinders, everything's good. So, so I'll just pop these in. Victor would put star washers sort of under each one as well as underneath. There's quite a few of them in there. Just act as a lock. And we should be good. So that stays there. I've just got to use the spacer. And of course all electroplated because I'm mental like that. Which one? That one's a nicer one. I'll put that one in. Because you see this one from the deck. Um, from above the deck, if you know what I mean. And it's all ready to go in. So, should be a cracker. So we'll get to base. The base has got another engine in at the moment, which is going in the ceramic green mower, which I colloquially call the Wolseley mower, because it's in a Wolseley colour. So that's all good. I'll go and get that base now, I think. Actually, before I do, I haven't got the wheels back for this for this yet. They were kind of average. I just sent everything to the hydro blast. So I'll pop an engine on there, um, which will be the one we first modelled. And I do want to do something with the exhaust. It's the one we first modelled on the um, utility. But I wanted something really old school on this. I just think that looks nuts. I call it the Wolseley mower because I want it to be really sort of old school. So I'm just going to stick my hand underneath and start these up, then I can sort of lean it back on its bars. Now the other thing is I've picked for this engine is the, it's got the old fashioned flywheel, it's just sort of sitting there. I don't think I've put the, um, oh no, it's got the lead in there. It's got like an adjuster bar you pull up to fold the, you know what I mean? To fold the handlebars down and it looks more old school. So I really wanted this one, um, with its colour scheme and the styling cues. I wanted it to look really old fashioned. Right, I've just stuck this, whoops, hang on, I haven't done this one up yet, on the utility, this 160. Um, again, new rings, um, bearing seal, that sort of thing. Just double check these are good. Yup, we're looking dandy. Ronnie, I'll get the disc onto it. Um, I'm having some fitting issues with the 125 on the ceramic green one. I forgot that the top cowling was for a 160, they're slightly different. Might have to modify it. Where the hell is that disc? Here it is. May have to modify it, not sure. Um, not really sure what I'm doing. Hang on, I need to undo this. Right, we're pretty much finished under the, underneath the utility. I think there's that one. So, I'm not putting blades on. I don't need to, they're not being used at the moment, but um, I think that'll be fine for now. So I'll show you what's going on up above. So this is a, a hybrid, this engine, it's um, it's the blob or the cases and crank out of the Commodore. That was the one that hadn't run for a long time and I didn't get it going. The piston is from that superpower. 
and I think the cylinder's off that too. I won an auction where I got a new old stock barrel, piston, rings, everything, which is going on the, the superpower. The, that was the gold one from Peter Tail that ran. I'm going to put it in that one, and that's going in the green chassis. So, Muffler's had a paint job. I did it silver instead of black. I just kind of like it better. And this will use a normal hood on. Have to order a couple of decompressor um, unions. Is that tight? No, that's not tight yet. And, you know, some new spark plugs, just crap like that. So there'll be more on this one. Nothing underneath. We're sort of finished under there. We've got to get some flywheels. I've got, I think, three good ones. And some of the others have broken fins on them. I'll break out the adjust, adjacent one to keep the balance if I have to use any of them. I don't really want to, but the beggars can't be choosers. And put the ignition in, the hood on, and I've got to clean up the white plastic top and put that on. But this one's shaping up to be beautiful. I really like how it's turning out. I've just got to get some stickers as well. A Victor one, I think a side shoot one as well. I think that's the only other one that, uh, that I need for this. Right, so some unadulterated mower chat. Uh, this is the one that was in a sense my least favorite but it's turned out to be one of the favorites here i've tried to make it look like an early 60s one now there's a couple of things that go with this this um, machine actually had a 160 on it and so that's what that hood is for so it doesn't actually fit the 125 engine i wanted it to look really old school i call it the wolseley mower because it's in a, a sort of a wolseley paint job um, I wanted a non-decompressed 125 engine with the rounded cylinder head. I just think it looks beautifully retro, as well as a torpedo exhaust. I'm very happy with that. But I do have to rework the top to make it fit. Now, what that's going to ne necessitate is putting studs in here, which I can do then. I've got those. But I'm going to have to shave those vents back, those fins back a little bit, just so that'll drop it down on top. Pardon me, and also to elongate these holes inward a bit so that they, everything sort of lines up and tightens and then that will sit level. Um, the other thing is a, a cooling issue. It shouldn't have any cooling issues because there's a lot of air sort of airflow under here. It's also got a channeled area on the inside to concentrate airflow as well. So I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. But it does mean a modification, which I didn't really set out to do. Um, that being said, though, I'm really happy with it, and it, it just that's the look I'm chasing with this machine. It's got the worst tyres on it. I haven't done the um, catcher yet. That's this one that had a dent in it. It's a bit of oil on there now. So I've got to bodywork that, and of course, when I get the other base back, I'll do that as well. But I'm really, really happy with how this one looks. So a couple of pl change plans. Of course, we've got all these sorry about that all those barrels and cylinder heads and everything therefore been hydroblasted and they look absolutely lovely um we've got a new old stock 160 uh, cylinder coming which will replace the one that was just in in the poorest of condition and i've ordered another piston for a 160 so all that there's four 160s including the daily which i've just used again today and i can't believe how good it is um and the other engines can go back on there. I've, I've ordered the standard rings for the 125s. I've got some good pistons there. I've got some oversized rings, 20 overs for the 125s. I've also decided to pull the 18s motor apart. I had a close look at this lower seal. And it's hard and it's cracked. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. That's just the dust seal part of it. But it was like that on the outside. It's probably like that on the inside as well. And, you know, it, it turned beautifully, and I thought, you know what, why don't I just pull it apart, give it a clean, it was pretty grotty in there, I've just sort of wiped it out, um, stick some new bearings and seals in if it needs them. Now, it turns out the lower 6203 bearing is noisy. You can't hear it on the camera. Some of these bearings, theoretically speaking, I didn't need to replace, but if there's any roughness or any noise at all, I've just chucked new ones in, Yeah. There's only one engine which has three good second-hand bearings in it. The rest of them I've replaced. Um, that's noisy. That's no good. That's a 6203 or 6204, sorry. So I've got the bearings. The crankshaft's been nicked in that area there, but it's not on the ceiling surface. But it does give me a chance to clean all that up, pop new bearings and seals in it, and then the 18's got a reconditioned motor because I've got new rings on the way for it. And I've honed the cylinder as well. So that's going to be a cracking little engine. There's nothing wrong with that. Getting back to this though, this is the one. It's not a particularly good looking exhaust. I don't know why that, well, yeah, that wasn't good. I don't know why there's a sort of thread hanging out of it. I might use, make a little gauze thing to go over the top. 
Um, but I really kind of dig the look of that. Um, the other thing that's happened, when I did the other video, I painted one of the bases in in Dulux Hammertone, which was a darker blue, and it wasn't the blue I wanted. In the sunshine, the blue looks lovely, but it's not really the um, it's not really the colour I was sort of shooting for. So I've decided, and the, and the problem with this too, all of these can you can change the colour quite easily because it's acrylic. But I, I sort of filled it, and that was the one that had a chunk out of the front. I filled it, and I etched it, and I did all this sort of stuff. Uh, I filled and painted it, and all of that has to come off. And I'm not going to sand it off. I've just given it back to John to get it blasted again. Um, I really just don't... I, I, I didn't like the colour. These are going to look lovely. I'm very happy with what we've got so far. And then there would have been that blue one, which just wasn't going to cut it. There was nothing wrong with the paint. It was good quality paint. It's a great product. It suits it in terms of the um, the finish it gives, the hammer shield and all that sort of stuff. I'm doing something unorthodox and using um, car paint. But I'll show you what I'm going to replace it with. Now, for those who like blue are going to be disappointed. I had to drop 35 bucks on this. I went to Milsom's. I just had to have it. Do you know what I mean? And I tossed up between Wild Violet and Walnut Glow, Ford colours, but I've decided on another green. It's another Holden green, and I had a Tirana this colour. Um, back when I was a kid, and it's LJ Tirana Lime Green. I just think that is absolutely gorgeous. And so we're going to have all these mowers in lovely retro colours. I'm not going to put car names on them like Victor used to, um, but I am going to paint them. Oh, I am going to paint them in car colours. So that is going to pop um, where the poor old blue couldn't. As I said, there's nothing wrong with the blue. It's a favourite with some people, but. It just wasn't for me um, in the sort of thing I'm doing now. And don't forget also, I haven't planned any of this. I'm just doing it as I feel. And of course, in that colour, I wasn't happy at all. So I think tomorrow, I'm going to take that off and rework it. Um, of course, we've got the hood that goes on the front. So it's a very heavy set in terms of bodywork. Uh, but this is a great engine. It's got new rings, bearing seals, as we've done with the rest of them. We've got these ones waiting. Um... And I've labelled which ones they're going on or what they're off. I know exactly what they're off. This is the new crank on the 125, so it's going on the little dark light blue starlet one. I haven't hydroblasted these cases. I don't think it needs it. That is a one... That's a 125. That's the one with the second-hand bearings, and I don't think I'll even use that. But it's somewhere I can park parts, and I can stick it on something and start it up just for the sake of it. But the rest of them are 160s. That's a 160. That's a 160, that's a 125, and we should be pretty good. I'm fairly happy with what's going on. Actually, I'm really happy with it. Um, I haven't finished putting this one together yet. That's just sort of sitting there, but not just that. I've ordered the unions for the decompressor, so once I've got that, I can put the black hood on, put the flywheel on, all that sort of stuff, and that will be a beautiful little, little machine. Um, I've also got... These three visions of loveliness, I'm very happy with these three. These are mainstay sort of display gigs. 160 on this one, the reconditioned, the virtually new 125 is going on that. That'll have a white plastic top. So will this. That's getting its gold top back. That's the original motor. It looks a little dirty, but I have cleaned it. I've got to put the carburetor on that. And I've also got to work out the exhaust because I lost one of the clips. Um, that has a torpedo exhaust as well. I'm going to relocate all this untidiness, that's from Peter Raymaker's workshop, and I use a lot of these tools, so I'm going to put these in a more useful place, and I think I'll do another bench top up on top so I can have two tiers of display. I really dig these. It's a great way to showcase some of the beautiful colours that came out back then, even though that pale blue, there are pale blues that looked a bit like that back in the 1970s, um, but that sort of came a bit later, but these are certainly 70s colours, these two, and I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. Leave it there for now. I'm happy with the progress. Um, oh, hang on, just before I forget, that's the top there. I do have to do something about that. It's it's very flat, but that sort of shows you roughly what that thing's going to look like. It'll sort of sit down at the back. Um, I'm very happy with the progress. Uh, new parts are coming, and the good thing about these is you can get a lot of parts. You know, you throw $100 and you get an awful lot of parts for them. So the fact I'm doing eight of them is probably a dearer way to do it. 
but I figure this each machine's probably going to owe me all up, including all your blasting and plating and parts and everything. Each machine's probably going to owe me about $200. Too much for one of these things. Um, if you were to sell them, I'd probably ask 300 bucks each, um, but they're not for sale at the moment. I'll just stick them up there and enjoy them. I don't think they're worth anything like $300, but when you factor in parts and labor, that's probably what they would have to cost. Um, but as I said, you know, we're not ready to get rid of any of them yet. I think in the next video, we'll have all the engines in and I think we'll probably have two videos left and then we're done. So all the blastings done, except that other base, which I went back for all the electroplating's done. That's all back here. Uh, 90 percent of the parts i think the only parts i need to order now are some spark plugs and air filters and just i've just got to think hang on a moment i'll put new wheel bushes in some of them uh, all the pistons i've got all them on order all the rings all the gaskets are here i do have to get some more zip cord pull stuff um i'm not sure what i'm going to do as far as that that had a zip on it but it was one of those external ones and it just didn't quite look right i wouldn't mind a wind-up thing on that um the, oh, the other thing I want to show you, have a look at this. Um, the 18s cowl is just absolutely beautiful. I've got, that's a, um, what do you call it? A rotary start thing, a ratchet start. I don't know what you call it. Um, there's some carburetor parts for the 18 in there. Um, the rest of them I've got here. But check this fuel tank out. It's absolutely gorgeous. A bit of body work to do on it, like a dent. But not just that, John managed to clean inside it. Let's take it over to the bench and have a look. Here it is here, you can see where it's all been brazed, probably by hand. Um, it's just sheet metal with two end caps on it. Can you see in there? Actually, why don't I get it taut and stick it inside? Um, can you see in there? It is just like brand new. I don't even know how he did it. The good thing about two strokes, they never rust because of all the oily crap in there. Um, and so it preserves them absolutely beautifully. So we'll fill that in. We'll tape that thread off so it stays in its raw colour. And that will get painted. And that will look absolutely beautiful. We've got a nice brass tap for it as well. But I'm more than happy with how well that came out. So I'm really fussy about the look of this thing. It's got the old uh, style lift up bar type folding arrangement on it. Um, it I wanted that whole sort of two tone green old world look. That was something I sort of invented on the <laughs> on the fly if you like right, well, i've sliced these vents off or these fins off they're original and a tiny bit off that they're the two biggest ones and that's the piece so it's negligible i don't think that's going to create any problems that sort of went down like that no it went like that they're rounded anyway i've taken those off the other thing with the cover on this is it's actually got this sort of channeled arrangement for airflow I don't even think that's going to be a problem so I've got to take off they'll be fine before the by the time you put nuts in and studs um, the holes will have to be meddled with the bit but we've got to put these studs in here um, in the place of those bolts all right so we're much around the fins here and put the studs in I just have to check those two bolts there because I got spooked and thought they were still loose so we can fit this for the final time and it should all go back together rather dandily. Um, I've got, I've modified this. I've elongated the holes in wood so the top shroud will fit. This one's not great because I've got to get a proper rod. That one hasn't got a spring, um, like a spring catch on it. So it's just got a bit of wire there holding it from falling back out that way. Um, It'll do, I suppose. I think we've got to be careful of too. This disc has a rust hole in it. There's no crags, so I wouldn't use that to cut grass. I would, it's fine as a flywheel to start the thing. And that's about all it's good for, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you look around, you can find new old stock ones. But as I said, just to fire the thing up, it's all good. 
And I'm not putting patches in or any of that sort of nonsense because that'll just thread the thing out of balance. Yeah, so we'll just, I found that these are off a motorcycle. Um, actually, I'll just stick that in so I don't drop anything in there for now. We'll see if we can get this cover on if it'll sit properly. We should, probably should put a washer on the back of that to, um, I'll see, maybe that would be too much. It might pull it back too much. Hang on, I'm threading myself around the camera. Um, let's see if this goes on. And it should, and I can't see, you guys are in the way, I might have to move the camera. Uh, is that on? Oh yeah it is. Hang on, whoops, that's in the wrong spot there then. Right, I don't think that's quite right. I think what we're going to need to do is take those washers off. They might just, we'll put smaller spaces on. Um, the spacing of the holes is alright though. I just can't see what I'm doing. I have to go feel our vision again. Now can I get these in? Is that in properly? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it looks like I can't put those washers there. This will all fit without them. Kind of just. Yeah, that fits. I mean, they're just going to have to be against those spaces, which worries me a bit because I think... I don't think they're really all that good a fit. Whatever. Let's stick these in. There's good access to the plug. That's fine. Um, I need some nuts. Are they the right nuts? Are they the right nuts? You can't see what I'm doing, I just realised. Right, so that's all. I'm, I'm just going to have to hold the camera. I can't. I don't know what to do with the other tripod. Which way was that originally? It's going on this way. Really, I would prefer, and I might still make some aluminium spaces for behind that, which are broader and support that better than these little motorbike ones, because chances are, I mean, they've not finished with the motorbikes yet. There's a very, very strong possibility I'll need those back anyway, those little spaces. That's fallen between there, and it's scratched it all, but what do you do? Beggars can't be choosers. And we just go around and we bolt this up. Oops. These are the Delrin things I cut today. They will go in like that, over the rod that goes in there. Um, I just have to cut another couple of those. I think another two and I'm good for those things. Um, what worries me is I've got this top on, it's 160 on a 125 engine, which is me. Eh. I've got to make sure the zip starter part is going to be central. I haven't cleaned it up yet. It still looks pretty grotty. It's this guy here. It doesn't look particularly pretty. I thought it'd be a better match for um, the, what do you call it? For this colour here, but I might have to tidy it up a bit more. Um, uses countersunk type bolts, like these ones. That looks a bit mangy, that one. But at least then I can get some feel for whether or not it's going to be okay. So this is just all sort of mock-up temporary fit type stuff. I think it just uses regular short quarter inch cords. I'm not sure, but we'll see if I can go in. And there's lock washers that go down here, but I'm not going to bother putting those on. I'm just trying to see if it's going to clear. This is to, I might. Yeah, this isn't very good. Yeah, okay. We're going to have to fiddle fart around for a bit. If I loosen this and it snaps back in, we know there's a problem. We know there's a problem. <laughs> uh, right, so what that means is it's going to have to go forward a bit. So I'm going to have to mess around a little bit more to make sure it goes in. But it'll be alright, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but I think that's probably it for now. Uh, I'll take this off and um, rework that. I've got all these bearings and seals, new ones. Rachel, if you see this, I've got your bearings here. And I've got two 20 mil seals. She's got a 160. So they're Rachel's. Um, I don't know what else she needs. She might need gaskets and all sorts of stuff. I'm not sure. 
I've also got another 17 here for the 18 engine. So I'll stick a whole new complement of bearings in that. One was really good, the other two were worn. So that'll get three new bearings, two new seals, and we're good. And I think that'll do for now. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. What do you reckon? Shit, man. Shit, that's fucking...